Today is November 21st, 2023, and I'm going to do an overview of Isaiah 19:19, God's altar of witness in the last days. What will be covered in this following, tracking down the location of the heart of Egypt and at its borders, giving some details that show this monument is a mathematical model and what is its modeling, some details that identify what message is embodied in this altar, at last, showing how the one world order is using it to mock God, but by doing so, giving testimony that this is the altar of witness to, in Isaiah 19.19. 19. This video will be short because it's just an introduction. There are other sources that go into this subject in great detail. Adam Rutherford actually published five books on it that go into great details on the mathematics of the structure. But first, let's do a quick prayer and then get started. Holy, holy, holy God Almighty, the one who is and was and is to come, and to his kingdom there is no end. The earth is his footstool, and the heavens proclaim his glory. How mighty is our God, the Alpha and the Omega, seeing the end from the beginning, the God who knows, the God who sees, the God who hears, the God who provides, the God who heals. The Lord is our banner, the Lord is our peace, the Lord is our justice, the Lord is our revenge. Hallelujah to the Lord, hallelujah. Praise his mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for adopting us as your children and giving us a future beyond the flesh where we see your face and dwell in your presence and your glory and your love forever. To the glory of the Father, in the name of his precious Son, Jesus, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, this is Isaiah 19, 19. In, this, in that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the heart of Egypt and a monument to the Lord at its borders. It will be a sign and witness to the Lord Almighty in the land of Egypt. There are clues which I learned from the late Dr. Gene Scott that can be used to track down this altar to the Lord. There are two types of altars in the Bible. One is an altar of sacrifice, and the other is an altar of witness. The monument in Isaiah 19.19 19 is an altar of witness. It, will, it is delivering a message. Today's technology cannot build it to the precision that the standing altar is built. Over a span of 13 stump acres, with some stones as large as 70 tons, the mean deviation between the joints is 1 50th of an inch. This is, this is 1 50th of an inch with an unknown cement poured into it with perfect consistency, even in the vertical. Pull one hair out of your head, split it in half lengthwise, and you will have one fifty of an inch. The cement in the joint is so strong that under stress, the stone will break before the joint will give. No previous civilization of man can match the precision of its build either, yet it is man-made. Modern age cannot build this. I'll explain how this is possible in another video because there is a lot of detail that goes that leads up to the theory. Even the hardest stone with the toughest strength of materials will flex when lifted by a hoist, straps, or crane, and the 150th of an inch gap between the stones will be impossible to obtain. You try pushing this stone up an earthen ramp on rollers, and the stone will be marred in the 150th of an inch placement between the stones impossible. The stones can only be placed by floating them through the air with nothing touching them and forces dis perfectly dispersed over the entire stone so they don't flex. The precision we are talking about here is the same as that which is required to make prescription eyeglasses. So there's no way this could be, have been built by ancient Egypt. The pyramids were already standing on location throughout the land when the first Egyptians migrated into the area. I personally believe Egypt was founded by and for Satan to intentionally camouflage God's altar of witness, and the influence of these pyramids created Egypt's culture, not the other way around. This is why I believe in the Bible, Egypt is considered the type of sin. I also believe that America is Egypt's opposite and that America was founded on God's word and for God. That's the reason America is blessed and is Israel's brother. As already stated, the monument isn't going to be built in the future. I've already, it's already on location at the center and border of Egypt. 
It was ancient ruins be back before any known history. The border being mentioned is the one between North and South Egypt. Egypt sometimes was ruled by two pharaohs and sometimes by one. The Nile Delta comes to a point, and that point intersects this North and South border, the center and border of Egypt. The point where the Nile Delta intersects the North and South border is the location. And here's Giza here, and a close-up that shows the Nile Delta, its point, and the North-South border, and the location of the Great Pyramid. And when you look, looking down through the sky, with the scope of a rifle, the location in the crosshairs lands right on top of the structure. Is it, there it is, and that's the location right here. And another picture from above shows, looking down from above, you can see that the Great Pyramid is eight-sided. Each side has three points. One here, one here, one here on this side. These points define an arch. These arches, if extended to a full circle, define a circle whose diameter matches the diameter of the Earth. This is the first of a number of features of the Great Pyramid that establishes that it is a model of the Earth in mathematics. The measuring unit of the structure is what's called the pyramid edge, and it's defined as one five hundred thousandth of the distance between the North Pole to the South Pole, a value that doesn't vary. The English edge is actually very close to this value, and that difference is only because of the drift over passage of time this means that the English measuring system is actually more accurate than the metric system, which is based on the segment of an arc of the equator. The standard metric standard varies greatly depending on which arc of the segment of the equator you pick. I believe the metric system was created by the children of darkness to try and deflect anyone from making the pyramid edge to English and its association. In other words, more camouflage. This capstone is missing because the world is currently balkanized under multiple governments. It has been that way since Babylon. The one world government of Babylon ended by the curse of Babel and the confusion of the language. This is the origin of the secret societies, the Dark Covenant, the Dark Council, the Bloodlines, Nazis, which is the cognate of Nimrod, etc. The purpose is to undo Babel, restore the one world government, and force everyone to give up the worship of God, just like it was outlawed during Babylon's time. I believe at the beginning of the millennium reign of Christ, when he ascends the throne in the New Jerusalem, a golden capstone will descend upon, out of heaven, take its place on top of the pyramid, restoring it to its original pristine condition with the casing stones. Which is casing stones right here, showing how smooth they are, and even with all the damage and wear over the extreme period of time that this is been around. I'm not going to go into depth of the prophetic timeline of the Great Pyramid, just enough to establish that this is an altar of witness. First off, it's delimited by the pyramid inch described earlier along the floor, starting with a date of 2141 BC, which is the year when the main passage matched up with the North Star at the time, Gamma Draconis, and the Pleiades matched up with the scored lines. Plate is probably the only constellation mentioned in the Bible by God, and it's mentioned in Job. Some significant dates that show up on the timeline is the birth of Christ, the start of his three-year ministry, the church history, the Jewish history, and the downward slide of the world. There are other sources that go into this in depth, with Adam Rutherford's work going into great detail about it. While Adam Rutherford took a stupid pill and caved in to, under pressure to make a prediction based on the timeline, which did not come true and then was used to discredit his entire work, the mathematics of the Great Pyramid cannot be discredited. There are hard facts that are, cannot be denied. As the one-fifth of an inch placement between the stones, the star alignments, the known dates that are shown in significant spots on the timeline in the passage, and the details that define it as a model of the Earth. If Adam had read his Bible, he would have known that nobody but God the Father knows when Christ will return. And that 
the last words about earth and heaven is getting refurbished into a new earth and new heaven. So in the absolute, there isn't an end of the world, just some events that may be the end of the for some people, but not others. Really, he should have told the people who were pressuring him to go to the carnival and get lied to by a Irish fortune teller than just stuck to the facts. And some additional details, the air shaft. There are also details such as the so-called air shaft in the pyramid. Strange how they don't exit the pyramid anywhere to let the air in. And that one of them has a door with stops blocking the air shaft. This is it at a, an air shaft. It's a continuation of the prophetic timeline for an age when the only way to explore it is using drones. Only God can architect a structure like this and incorporated detail requiring knowledge of when man would have the capabilities to explore it. When it is fully mapped out, we'll probably find more significant historical data alignments with the features of these passages. And now this is the testimony of the darkness on the back of the $1 bill. Let's go over the world where Lord is mocking God by putting this on the back of our $1 bill. In 1963, the $1 bill was redesigned, and on its back, this uninfinished pyramid was added with the floating capstone above it. The so-called Eye of Providence on the satanic capstone is really the all CNI, the Illuminati, the One World Government, the Deep State, and etc. They put this on our currency to mock God by floating their capstone over it. What they are saying is, we are the capstone and the rulers of the world, not your Christ. The problem for them is that you cannot mock like this without revealing and testifying that you believe the Great Pyramid is God's altar of witness. But then they figured we were all too stupid to figure it out. And wrap up our short introduction and overview. These are my sources that I used for they put together for this presentation. So I'll wrap this up. I give credit to those who learned from and whose knowledge I have used for this video. Keep an eye on the darkness to expose them and have a good day.